All right, we have arrived at lesson three, the fence post method. Now I can use this in either one or two point perspective. Um, I think in this case, I will actually Maybe I'll go for two point perspective. All right, so in two point perspective, just to review, I need to place my points as far away from each other as I can. In fact, if I'm doing a large drawing with perspective or a painting in which I really need to create a realistic space, I will often place my vanishing points off my picture plane. Um, so I will be showing you an example of that later. However, for my demo, that would be a little inconvenient. So my two points. Now, instead of making a box, I am going to create a line of something moving back in space. Since this is typically referred to as the fence post method, I might as well make a uh, fence post. So. If I am creating a fence, I am just going to start once again with a line. And I'm drawing it fairly large. Okay, let me make sure I get the top. All right. Now, one little trick that um, I just want to let you guys know, the fence post method will collapse like dominoes if my lines are not perpendicular. Now, when I drew my horizon line in, I was pretty careful to keep it straight. Um, I can check to see if my fence post is perpendicular just by taking something that I know has a right angle and using that to kind of check my work. Obviously, it is an imperfect situation, right? I learned this because I could never find my T-square, so there's always something. This is just the back of an old notepad, um, but I'm sure you have a piece of paper handy. Okay, so what is this line? Well, if I were drawing a box, this would be the corner. I could extend it this way or that way, or I could pull it towards me if this was a view inside of a room. Um, but instead, I'm just going to create a fence extending into the distance over here. So my next step, now that I have my first po post, is I need to create my second post. So, where should I do that? Well, I'm going to space them fairly far apart for now, just because it's going to be easier for you to see what I do. Okay. Now, I drew a line. Is that quite right? Not exactly, because I need to remember that all the tops of my fence posts and all the bottoms of my fence post are going to line up. This is where it's a problem that I'm actually in my closet. Let's see. They are going to line up to my vanishing point. So you can see I made just a slight error and did not make this post quite tall enough. Okay, so with just this information, I can go ahead and establish post number three. Um, now I find this to be simple, but it takes a little bit of practice to get it right. So our first step to figure out where this third post belongs is I need to find out where the center of post number one is. So if I were doing this at home, maybe use a ruler. Let's see. Okay, 
I'm going to straighten that out. Okay, that seems good. All right, so now I know a couple different things. I know how tall all my posts are. I know where all the tops are, all the bottoms. I know where all the middles are. I know how much distance is between these first two. And I can use that information to create the third. Now, this is where you need to watch carefully. So I'm gonna go from the top of the first through the middle of the second, and that's gonna show me where my third one begins. Top, middle, and then here we go. And I'm just gonna shoot that line straight up. Or something approximating. And again, if I wanted to check my work, I could just take something with a right angle and check it. Sometimes what starts to happen is it starts to collapse as it moves back in space. Okay, so now I have two. Let's move on to post number four. So I'm going to go from the top through the middle intersect with that bottom point and then I'm going to shoot that point straight up and oh, to top let's see that's not quite the middle top middle and then I'm going to shoot this point straight up and this always reminds me of almost like doing a little stitch. Right. Now back here, this is not exactly going through the center, so it's gonna get a little skewed. So maybe I will go in and correct that. And you just have to bear with me because I'm in too tight of a space to use the ruler uh, this long, so. I think you can see how this is starting to work though. And maybe I'll just stick with this pen just to keep it easy. Okay, so now I have a diminishing set of posts. I can go in and I can erase out some extra lines. Now, um, if this were to be used in different ways, um, this opens a lot of possibilities. So for instance, these could all be buildings that were the same size. If I were to turn this sideways, this could be a sidewalk or segments in a tiled floor. Um, this could help me space out doorways or windows. So understanding this I think is really crucial to taking our understanding of perspective to the next level. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take this fence post and maybe I will turn it into something else. Um, I think in this case what I will do is turn it into um, some very, very basic buildings. When I say buildings, we're just kind of going back to our boxes.
Okay. All right. So these are um, a bit dystopian as far as buildings go. Um, but of course I could alter them in some way. Um, perhaps I will actually, um, you know, I could reshape them if I wanted, um, or I could connect them. And again, it's important to remember that in two point perspective, everything is either going to this vanishing point or that one. So I'm starting to turn this into some type of building. And if I want to make this back one just the same, that is an option for me. Should I give it a roof? Let's do that. Okay, so if I want to give this building a roof, I'm going to have to find the center point, right? And the way that I'm going to do that is to simply draw an X through my form. And if you think about it, the fact that I can divide something in half by creating an X is the whole reason that the fence post method works. So I divided this in half and now I can go up and I can add a roof onto this kind of sad little house. And if I want this back building to be the same height, I just line up the roof peak with the other one. Yep. And of course I could project my roof out in space if I wanted to. I could add in windows as long as I remember that everything's going this way or this way. I can add a little bit of depth. All right. And one thing you'll notice is right at the horizon line, everything kind of flattens out. Okay. So that is it for our fence post method, but uh, hopefully you can see how this would be a really useful thing to understand with perspective. So practice. All right. Thanks guys.